Hello all. Welcome to this video on distributed computing. Today I'll be talking about ring algorithm. Now to begin with, we'll start with leader election. A leader is useful for coordination among distributed servers. An algorithm for choosing a unique process to play a particular role is called an election algorithm. Now why do we need an election? Let us take an example where we all have bank accounts and these account details will be replicated in a few servers and among these one of the servers will be responsible for all the reading and writing into the data. So that will be called the leader among all these replicas. Now there are some scenarios that can be taken into account like if there are two leaders for each bank customer or if a server disagrees on who the leader is or the case of a leader crashing. Either of this scenario can lead to inconsistency. Let us take another example where we will have a group of NTP servers. Now NTP is network time protocol. So we need to decide which of these servers is a root server. So based on the root server, all the other servers will be updating their time. In order to decide that too, we will need an election. There are also other systems that will need leader election like Apache Zookeeper and Google's Chubby. Apache Zookeeper is an open source server for highly reliable distributed coordination of cloud applications. Whereas Google Chubby is a highly available and persistent distributed log service and configuration manager for large scale distributed systems. Now looking into the leader election problem, we'll have a group of processes here and we need to elect a leader to undertake specific tasks. And this information should be known to all the other people in the group. There is another problem of what happens when a leader fails or crashes. We need to set some processes which will be acting as the failure detector and how is the next leader chosen. Now whenever a leader election algorithm is designed, it should always ensure that it will elect only one leader among all the non-faulty processes and also all these non-faulty processes should agree on who the leader is. Now let us look into the system model. Here we will have n processes. So each of them will have a unique ID and the messages will be eventually delivered. Also, there are chances of failure during the election protocol. Now, the calling for an election. So here, an individual process does not call more than one election at a time. But in principle, the n processes can call n concurrent elections. At any point in time, a process PI is either a participant or a non-participant. Participant is engaged in some run of the election algorithm, whereas a non-participant is not currently engaged in an election. An important requirement is the choice of elected processes to be unique, even if several processes call elections concurrently. That is, for example, two processes could decide independently that a coordinator process has failed and both of them can call for elections. Each process will have a variable called as elected which will contain the identifier of the elected process. So when a process first becomes a participant in an election, it will set this variable as not defined or null. Each election algorithm should always guarantee two things one is safety and other is lightness. 
safety means for all the non faulty process p it will have a variable called as elected so this elected will contain the information of a particular non faulty process with the best attribute value which is the highest identifier or it can be a not defined value if the participant is having the election for the first time the second property is liveness which means whenever an election terminates for all the non faulty processes involved their variable value of elected should never be null now at the end of the election the non faulty process with the best value is chosen now the common attribute that we use for election to happen is the identifier value that is the one with the highest identifier will be chosen as the leader there are also other attributes like the highest ip address or the fastest cpu or the one using the most disk space etc we can also measure the performance of an election algorithm by its total network bandwidth utilization which will be proportional to the total number of messages sent and also by the turnaround time for the algorithm that is the number of serialized message transmission times between the initiation and termination of a single run now let us look at the classical ring election algorithm where there are n processes which are organized in a logical ring now this arrangement is similar to a code system now code is a protocol and algorithm for a peer to peer distributed hash table each process pi will have a communication channel which is connected to the process p of i plus 1 mod n and all the messages will be sent clockwise this algorithm is also known as chang and roberts algorithm here we also assume that no failures occur and that the system is asynchronous the goal of this algorithm is to elect a single process called the coordinator which is the process with the largest identifier now looking into the ring election protocol initially every process is marked as a non participant in an election any process can begin an election it proceeds by marking itself as a participant placing its identifier in an election message and sending it in clockwise direction so when a process will receive an election message it will compare the identifier in the message with its own if the arrived identifier is greater then it will forward the message to its neighbor if the arrived identifier is a smaller value and if receiver is not a participant then it will substitute its own identifier in the message and forwards it but it does not forward the message if it is already a participant on forwarding an election message in any case the process marks itself as a participant if however the received identifier is that of the receiver itself then this process identifier must be the greatest and it becomes the coordinator now the coordinator marks itself as a non participant once more and sends an elected message to its neighbor announcing its election and enclosing its identity when a process pi receives an elected message it marks itself as a non participant set its variable elected to the identifier in the message and unless it is the new coordinator it will forward the message to its neighbor now we'll see if the two requirements for an election algorithm is met here or not it can be seen that the first property which is safety is met here 
all the identifiers are compared since a process must receive its own identifier back before sending an elected message. For any two processes, the one with the larger identifier will not pass on the other's identifier. It is therefore impossible that both should receive their own identifier back. The second property that is liveness will immediately follow from the guaranteed traversals of the ring. That is, we have already assumed that there are no failures in this case. Now we will see an example of how the ring algorithm works here. Here we have six processes P12, P3, P6, P32, P80 and P5. So we assume that P3 is initiating the election. So initially the value of election message will be 3. That is the one who has begun the election. Now in the next step what happens is the election message has reached 32. Now on comparing the ID it will see that 32 is greater than 3. Now the election message will contain the value 32. Next this value is passed on to P5. Since 5 is less than 32, the election message will still contain the value 32. Now this value is passed on to P80. Now on checking 80 is greater than 32. So the new election message will be updated as 80. Now when this message is given to P6, 6 is less than 80. So the election message stays the same which is passed on to P12. Still the value of election will be 80 because 12 is less than 80. This value is again passed on to P3. Since 3 is less than 80, the election message will still have the value 80 which is passed on to P32. 32 being less than 80, the same message is passed on to P5. 5 being less than 80, the message is passed on to P80. Now since P80 got the election message with the value ID 80, it understood that it is the process with the largest ID in the ring. Now what it does is, it will send the message elected, which will have the value 80. And this will be circulated to all the processes in the ring. Now as soon as P6 receives this elected message being 80, it will set its variable elected as 80. Now this will repeat each time this message is passed on to each process. So at the end, we will see that all these processes have the elected variable value as 80. Now when the elected message will reach P80, at the end, what happens is, it will also set its elected variable as 80. Now let us see what will happen in a worst case scenario. So worst case scenario is when P6 is initiating an election and the process with the highest ID is a predecessor of it which is P80. Now in this case, we will need n minus 1 messages for the election message to be passing from P6 to P80. That is the first set of uh, clockwise messages being sent which I discussed in the example before. And also we need n messages for election messages to circulate around without any message change. Also, we need another n messages for the elected message, this one. So, in total, we will need 3n minus 1 messages. So, taking the completion time, the completion time will be the transmission time for this 3n minus 1 messages. So, if there are no failures, the election will terminate as usual, which will satisfy the liveness property, and everyone will get to know who will have the highest ID process. So that will satisfy the safety property. Now when is the best case? Best case is the one where the initiator is the one with the highest ID that is P80. So this is the case. 
So here we will need only 2n messages to pass on the election message and the elected message. So the total number of messages is 2n and the completion time will be the time taken to transmit 2n messages. Now there can be a case where we have multiple initiators. All the examples we saw before only one process was initiating the election. So in the theory that I, I explained before, I already told that usually only one process does it, but theoretically it is possible n processes can start n elections. So we will see what we will do in such a case. There instead of having a single initiator ID, we will include all these initiator IDs in the message that will be circulating in the ring. So each process will have to separately remember the election message or the elected message of each initiator it receives. Here we had only a single set of variables since there was only one process. So when there are multiple initiators we need to have more variables. And also each process will suppress the election message or elect elected message that is circulated by a lower ID initiator. And also they will update their cache, the process cache, whenever it will receive a higher ID than itself. And the result will only contain the initiator which had the highest ID among those. Also note these IDs are unique, so there is no chance of duplication there. We will also see a scenario of what will happen when the leader is failing. So we have taken the first example we saw where we have a P3 that will initiate the election and uh, we have completed the stage where we decided that P80 is the leader based on it having the highest ID. So this is a stage when P80 is sending the elected message to P6 as a result of which the elected variable of P6 is 80. Now it was sending the elected message to P12 that is when P80 crashed. So we know that this election will stop only when elected message will reach P80 in the clockwise direction. But what happened here is P80 is crashed. So as a result of which this elected message will circulate forever in the ring as a result of which the property of liveness will be violated. That's all for now. Thank you for watching.